I've worked with filmmakers that I, and the first thing I ask any filmmaker that I work with as a cinematographer, I say, so what is the meaning, like what does this movie mean to you? Why, why do you have to make it? And if I don't like the answer, I don't work on it. Um, but they do have usually a, an answer that at least satisfies me enough to shoot for them, but only because if, if I say no, somebody else is going to do it. And I, I do think I have something to contribute as a collaborator. And um, I hope I have something to contribute as a director, but that's still to be determined. <laughs> it's too soon to say. I think I was 12 or 13 when I saw on, I, I would watch on public television late at night, they would play foreign films and this was very exciting to me as a kid, Kurosawa movies and things like that. And I saw Day for Night, La, La Nuit Americaine, the, the Truffaut film. And uh, there's a moment with Jacqueline Bisset where she turns and looks maybe directly into the camera. I don't know. I think it's a little bit incorrect in my head, but I felt like she looked at me and uh, and I just, it was another level of of um, appreciating cinema. And I was, you know, pubescent boy. So there was that. There was the beautiful woman. And where I grew up is not very many beautiful people. And uh, so that encouraged me to watch more European movies. And, and then I decided, yeah, wow, I would, must be cool to make movies. But it didn't seem possible where I, where I grew up that I could do that. But I, I was determined, I guess. No, I mean, he was for us and he should be, uh, um, you know, people are comfortable crediting with him with, uh, at least in America, I know the French invented cinema, Americans invented cinema, everybody has their version of, of uh, the origins and the origins of film grammar, um, but I mean, I think you can't dispute Griffith's contributions to film grammar. He was developing uh, a lot of, a lot of incredible, like, uh, visual storytelling effects, um, special effects even. Uh, there's a movie he did called The Avenging Conscience that's a, it's kind of a horror movie and it's extremely dazzling. This way, the way that Morneau films are and uh, yeah, and, but he's just, he's, he's, his reputation is, is uh, compromised by the, you know, the, the, the history, the, you know, the, the con, the con, you know, we know what it is. You know, it's birth of a nation. It's it's his representations of, of all color, people of color, and all these things that uh, we all get hung up on so much now. And, and you know, it's it's right to recognize these things, but also understand the time. And also, you know, but this is a terrible conversation for me to be a part of because I'm not going to ever win. But I just I think it's important to see the films for the filmmaking again, because we're getting very far away from being uh, very crafty. These films that are I see now are the only inventions in films now are all purely computer and digital um, in intrusions, in my opinion. The last thing I did in the edit was uh, we put in a scene that had been cut out. I, 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 in my sleep, I said, we need to put in the scene where Rish and, Tal and Talia, the scene with Mohammed and Lillian at the end when they walk through the forest and they come to the, this, and they become, a, they're in a painting. That scene we'd cut out because we thought it was, that the movie was too, too slow at that point. And then I, I said, I said, no, we have to put it back in. And, uh, and we did, and that was a, that was an important decision. I'm glad I did that. Because it was, the problem was, I was, we were starting to listen to too many other people. And they're saying, you know, oh, it's, it's a little slow, it's a little slow. For speed, and, and I know I'm, I'm comfortable with it, and I, 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 you know, maybe I'm good at it in a way. Um, when I see really good handheld camera, it's, uh, it's very exciting to me. You know, there's, there's Polish cinematographers and, and Russian ones that uh, can hand, what they could do with handheld camera. Japanese guys in the 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. So that's like, yeah, they became really. After 60s, you know, documentaries and Frederick Wiseman, then it's Dardenne for hand. They, like, own the handheld brand almost. Um, yeah, it's true. It's true. 
Yeah, I watched that again recently, just the beginning, yeah. That was the first day of shooting, too, on that film. So we didn't really, we didn't really have the, like the, um, we hadn't really figured out what it was going to be like, the movie yet, you know. I mean, we talked about it, but when, when I worked with the Safties, there was a, a kind of a very simple concept that we, or rules maybe that we have, and, but we didn't really talk, we strategized too much. We had to keep, keep it loose. But that was the very first day, yeah. And it was a complicated day. We lost electricity, so we lost half the day. It was, yeah, so we had to shoot that pretty fast. We'll have her coming out of the, this hotel parking garage. We didn't have permits for any of that. So um, I wanted it to be one shot because I wanted it to be very quick. As soon as she leaves this scenario, she's immediately brought into another one. Oh my God, oh my God, I'm so sorry. We're not a threat. Just don't, don't look at us. I, I do use a polarizer, uh, a polarizer always when I'm outside. And then with black skin, you can kind of choose where there might be reflection or glare or color. You can, it's like a whole different thing on black skin. It's really beautiful. Oh, one other thing. Uh, I actually edited, edited that scene myself first. That, when I, I originally thought I was gonna edit the whole film and that scene, I edited it and uh, I, we changed it a little bit later, but basically I, I, that's one of my scenes <laughs> in the so film. Choose the white Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I, I when we m were making it, I don't know if I can ever make another movie, so I put as much as I could in this, you know, and there's miniatures, and there's a Muppet, and there's animation. I tried to put everything in. Uh, Nick, the writer, likes to talk about the, the road trip part because most, most road trip movies in America are in the West, or they go across the country, but we just go up the, we basically go up a, a an interstate, a turnpike, and that's about it. It's not really a big adventure, but it is for her because, I mean, that's the, that's the truth in, in the East Coast. I mean, these cities are not far apart, but they're worlds apart, even, um, especially when you're young. I, I thought New York was a day away from me where I grew up, like, to drive there, and then I found out it was only three hours and, uh, when I was 18, so it's, it's a strange thing. It's still... It's just another world. Well, yeah, she doesn't know who she's going to be yet. Also, I think that's I, that's part of how I was relating to the characters, is somebody who doesn't know even what they like yet when they're when they're there. Independent means uh, you're making something outside of the system without any guidance from anyone else, uh, which is really almost impossible especially if you want to have some money. There's a lot of independent films being made that are, <coughs> you know, that play at some festivals and then there's no outlet for them. There's no way for them to be seen, you know, nationwide uh, streaming platforms that come and go for independent films. Uh, they, I mean, they all fail. I don't think people see independent films in America anywhere. I mean, I think in festivals outside of America, you're more likely to see independent films than anybody in America does now. But then after we do, we're done doing this tour, I don't know. I don't know if, uh, if anybody will be seeing it in theaters anymore. We have a 35 millimeter print, and there's some cities that get excited about that, luckily. Uh, it went on digital download the other day, which means also that now it's being pirated on the internet. So, um, but that's just where it's going to live, you know, ultimately, is uh, a cult internet thing. It's too bad. I love the idea of of, um, you know, in the, in the 70s and 80s, there was the university tour where cult films would go and, you know, John Waters films and David Lynch and, you know, their movies would play at universities across America. And that was a, that was a real source of income. But, yeah, I don't know. Okay. I, think, I think, one thing, I, I do think that some young entrepreneur, uh, artistic person is going to uh, find a way for a more a democratic um, existence of films, you know, for people distribution-wise, yeah. Okay, thank uh, you. Thanks. <laughs>